good morning everyone welcome to our devotion this friday morning great to connect with you again as we look at psalm 34 we've been dealing with it over the last three devotions and if you haven't uh, listen to them or watch them up to now I really encourage you to do so so that we can all be uh, at the same place as we continue looking at the psalm so up to now we have focused on trials and how the righteous will always have to endure them and I now want to just look at two other powerful themes that emerge from the psalm the one being fear and the other being desire. As you go through the psalm, you become aware that you are shaped most profoundly in your life by what you fear and what you desire. And that's why the, the question is posed in this way. Whoever of you loves life and desires to see many good days. Whoever of you loves life and desires to see many good days. And as we said before, Hopefully that is all of us. Now, talking about fear, studies show that as babies, we are really only afraid of two things naturally, the fear of falling and the fear of loud noises. Those are the only two fears that we're born with. But as we grow up, we take on a number of different learned fears. And in the Psalm, we find both legitimate or appropriate fears as well as illegitimate or inappropriate fears. Now, inappropriate fears are those that really break us, derail us, delude us. They paralyze us, they imprison us, they defeat us, they confuse us, they even shame us. Neil Anderson puts it like this, Fear is a thief. It erodes our faith, plunders our hope, steals our freedom, and takes away our joy of living the abundant life in Christ. They are like the coils of a snake. The more we give in to them, the tighter they squeeze. Tired of fighting, we succumb to the temptation and surrender to our fears. What seemed like an easy way out becomes in reality a prison of unbelief, a fortress of fear that holds us captive. What a wonderful description of fear and the bible says these are the fears that we need to repent of these are the fears that david speaks of for example in verse 4 where he says i sought the lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears those are inappropriate fears now we spoke about fear some time ago so i don't want to labor the point that it's worth making a list of some of those inappropriate fears in your life so that you can confront them like David did and ask God to deliver you from them. For example, and I just thought about a number of fears and I wrote them down. The fear of, of failure, the fear of rejection, the fear of not being accepted, the fear of not measuring up, the fear of being unloved or undervalued, the fear of guilt, the fear of the unknown, the fear of pain, the fear of losing control, the fear of losing a loved one, the fear of being alone, the fear of death, the fear of the future, and I'm sure you might add more to that list. And all of those can torpedo our faith. And I've said it many times before, that fear is not necessarily an absence of faith. It's just faith in the wrong things in other words misdirected faith and sometimes as i believe in this instance in david's life it was due to a lack of faith i mean david feared for his life in other words he had a fear of man and we know that that man was saul who was seeking to take his life now i know you might immediately say but surely that's a legitimate fear if someone wants to take your life surely it's a legitimate fear well, is it? I mean, the same might be said of, of cancer or COVID-19. They really seeks to take away life. But we surely should not be fearing it. David had been chosen by God to be king of Israel. He had been called by God, I mean, from a field as a shepherd boy to be king of Israel. Did he really think that David 
or rather that, that God would forsake him and allow Saul to take his life after God had chosen him and invested so much into his life. You see, that was a lack of faith on David's part. And often when that happens, we take things out of God's hands and we resort to our own worldly uh, devices or schemes. And in David's case, it was to lie and to use deception. And really, when you think about it, those are the schemes or the devices of the enemy, of the devil, not of God. And so as a result of taking these things into his own hands, he faced the consequences. There was a greater chance of Goliath killing him on the battlefield than Saul killing him now. And yet God had protected him and preserved him. So those are legitimate fear, uh, illegitimate fears. And then, of course, there are appropriate fears. And in this psalm, David identifies four times the singular appropriate fear that needs to, to mark us out. In verse 9, he says this, O fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him have no lack. In verse 11, Come, O children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. And back in verse 7, The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, who fear the Lord, and he delivers them. Now that is a, a healthy fear. You know, some people have an unhealthy fear of God. They're afraid of God as if he were some tyrant leaning over a balcony ready to strike them down whenever they make a mistake. But that is not a godly fear. Here is one of the best definitions I've read on what it means to fear the Lord. To fear the Lord is to recognize God for who he is. Almighty, righteous, pure, all-knowing, all-powerful, all-wise, and all-loving. When we regard God correctly, we gain a clearer picture of ourselves, sinful, weak, frail, and needy. When we recognize who God is and who we are, we will fall at His feet in humble respect. Only then will He show us how to choose His way. Yet even in the psalm, we are given an insight into what the fear of God means. David uses a wide range of words and phrases that speak to his response, his approach to this God whose praise he declares. In verse 1 he says, I will bless the Lord at all times. In verse 2 he says, I will boast in the Lord. Verse 3 he says, I will magnify the Lord. Verse 4 and 5, he will seek the Lord. Verse 13 and 14, he will obey the Lord. Verse 22, he trusts in him and takes refuge in him. And so at the core, to fear the Lord is a shift in focus from a, a preoccupation with the things that terrify us to a preoccupation with the one who can rescue us. Now, Sunday week ago, we looked at Isaiah 6 when we looked at the questions that God asks. The fear of the Lord can be summed up in the tension between the word that Isaiah uses when he encountered God and he cried out, Woe is me! And the other word is wow. Those two words, you know, alongside one another. The one is woe and the other is wow. Having been forgiven, after acknowledging our sinfulness, woe is me, we we kind of declare, wow, marveling at God's grace, marveling at his forgiveness. How God could possibly use someone like me. And so the Christian life is, is that tension between the woe, seeing ourselves as we really are, and the wow, just seeing God for who he is. And that's exactly how David saw himself and how God saw God. That is the kind of fear, the healthy fear that God wants us to have. And so I trust that's been helpful. And next time we will look at a few other characteristics of this fear that emerge from the psalm. And then we're going to talk about the other theme that we mentioned, that 
emerges from the psalm, and that is the theme of desire, fear and desire. And so on that note, let's just bow in a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you that even Solomon said, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. And we know, Lord God, that there are healthy fears and unhealthy fears. There are appropriate fears and inappropriate fears. And we pray, Lord God, that we might examine the inappropriate fears in our lives and just give them to you. And pray, Lord God, that you would deliver us from those fears as we repent and as we come and confess them to you. But we pray, Lord God, that you would instill in us that healthy fear, that fear that sees you for who you are and really recognizes us for who we are. Lord, may we, may we understand that, that tension in our daily lives of woe and wow, that we may, like Isaiah, say, woe is me and see ourselves for who we really are in your sight. And yet at the same time, just marvel at your amazing grace as we have looked at over a number of weeks and declare, wow, how can God love me, such a sinner? And how can God use me as he does? And so, Lord, we just thank you for your word. We just thank you for this tremendous psalm. There's so much in it. And may we continue to love you with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, with all our strength. And we ask this in and through your precious name, the name that is above every other name, the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Bless you. Have a great day. We'll catch up with you on Friday and we'll look at those other characteristics that we spoke about. Bless you.